Today's mini lesson is on the topic of, quote, titrations. You've probably heard this word titration before. Maybe I've said it or maybe you heard it in one of your chemistry classes in high school. What a titration is, is it's a fancy word for just a reaction. It is reacting a substance of a known concentration with another substance of an unknown concentration. Why would we do this? The goal in all of these sort of titrations is to determine the unknown. The goal is to calculate the unknown concentration. Now, one thing that's important about titrations is that it's not just any substance. The substances in a titration must be solutions. So when we talk about these substances here, the known substance and the unknown substance, both are solutions. And for this class, they're both gonna be aqueous solutions. That means a homogeneous mixture of a substance with water. Okay. So that's the definition of a titration. What does this actually mean? What does this look like in practice? Well, in this class, we're only gonna look at a specific type of titration, which is the acid-base titration. And this is gonna actually be something you do in the Beyond Labs uh, experiment 10. So consider this acid-base reaction. Okay. This is the most famous acid-base reaction. Hydrochloric acid, which is the most common acid, in my opinion, plus sodium hydroxide, which is the most common base, in my opinion, because probably also the two acids and bases that are produced the most, uh, produces H2O, liquid, plus NaCl, aqueous. So that's the balanced acid-base neutralization reaction when you have HCl mixed with NaOH. And if you go through and draw the net ionic equation, which I encourage you to do, you'll see that it looks like this. H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous produces H2O liquid. And I, like I said, I encourage you to try and write out this ionic equation yourself and see the net ionic equation. You'll see that the sodium and the chloride end up being spectator ions, so they cancel out, and you're just left with H plus plus OH minus produces H2O. So refresh your memory on how to write net ionic equations. That is important. So what we can see here with this net ionic equation is the following. If you, and I'm talking to you, slowly and carefully add NaOH. Because of course we're chemists, we wanna be slow and careful. Two HCl, or, or vice versa, it doesn't matter who you add to who, so I'll just say or vice versa. At some point, the moles of NaOH that you add will equal the number of moles of H plus originally in solution. That is the main idea of a tri titration. You'll have some cup with HCl inside. Maybe I'll even draw a picture here. So let's say we have a cup, and inside the cup is HCl, which I'll draw in purple, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly and carefully add NaOH 
to the cup. So we'll have our HCl. And then we'll start adding NaOH. Maybe we'll add it drop by drop. So the NaOH goes into our cup and starts reacting with the HCl. Now what will happen exactly at the moment that the number of moles of NaOH is equal to the number of moles of HCl in the flask? What will happen at that moment? There's this one special magical moment where you've added exactly the same moles of NaOH as you've added HCl. And at that moment, there'll be nothing left in this cup except for H2O. And of course, NaCl, the spectator ions, will be present there too. But that is what we call the equivalence point, and that is a golden point. That's a magical point. That is a point that we are trying to find in a titration. We want to take a flask with HCl and add NaOH to it until all the HCl is just reacted with the NaOH, the perfect one-to-one -one ratio. Now, a lot of times you can miss this point very easily and you can keep adding NaOH. And if you keep adding NaOH past the equivalence point, well, then there'll be NaOH inside of the flask, but there won't be any HCl left. The HCl would have been all destroyed by the NaOH you added before to make water. Okay, so this is if you keep adding NaOH. So our goal is actually to stop at this point right here, the equivalence point during a titration, because that's going to give us information about how many moles of HCl was originally present. Now, how can you tell you've reached the equivalence point? How can you tell that you've reached the equivalence point? In reality, it's very hard because the HCl solution, that looks just like water. And the NaOH solution, that looks like water too. So really, to the untrained eye, it just looks like you're adding water to water. So nothing special will change when you reach the equivalence point. It'll just continue to look like water. You'll, you'll have passed it and you wouldn't even know it. And so what we do is add an indicator. There are dozens of indicators available for purchase on websites like Amazon and other chemical supplying companies. It's amazing how many uh, chemicals you can actually buy on Amazon.com. And the indicators are very special chemicals where you just add a couple drops of the indicator before you start. You actually would add an indicator at the beginning. And then right around the equivalence point, the indicator will change colors and then you know you've reached the equivalence point. So the whole solution will turn a different color. Some indicators, they turn red, some turn pink, some turn blue. There's different indicators available depending on the job you're doing. Uh, but one of the most common indicators is phenylphthalein. And it changes pink right around the equivalence point for an acid-base titration. So you'll add NaOH drop by drop to the HCl until the indicator turns pink, and then you'll stop adding NaOH, and you know that you're, if not exactly, very close to the equivalence point. And then you'll mark down how much NaOH you added. So let's take a look at how an example problem might look for this situation. Okay. All right, here's an example. The titration of, let's say, 10.0 milliliters of an unknown HCl solution requires Twelve point five four milliliters of a zero point one zero zero molar NaOH solution. And I'll say uh, to reach the equivalence point.
what is the molarity of the unknown HCl? So step one is going to be to write a balanced equation. Always. For a titration, you want to write a balanced equation. So for this one, it's HCl and NaOH, so it's the same reaction that we had on the previous page, the most popular acid-base reaction. So HCl aqueous plus NaOH aqueous produces H2O liquid plus an ACL aqueous. Is this balanced? Yes, it is. All right, time for step two. Step two is you want to convert the moles of the known substance into the moles of the unknown substance. So moles of known into moles unknown. All right, do I know what my known is? What is my known in this problem? Is my known the HCl or is my known the NaOH? Well, look at the problem and it says very clearly the HCl is the unknown. So that means NaOH is my known. Do I tell you the moles of NaOH? I do not. I tell you the volume of NaOH. I tell you the molarity of NaOH, but I do not tell you the moles of NaOH. So we'll need to calculate that. So what information do I give you that allows you to determine the moles of the known? It is the volume and the molarity. Remember, molarity is a relationship between volume and moles, but it is not itself moles. So we'll start with our volume. So our volume was the 12.54 milliliters of NaOH solution. And now we need to use the molarity to turn that into moles. So what goes up must come down. Milliliters on the bottom. Now molarity only works in liters. So I need to convert this into liters first. So one milliliter is 10 to minus three liters. Okay, now we're in liters. That was just a little technicality. Then I can go from liters to moles. Moles in AOH. Okay, one liter of the solution will be 0 0.100 moles of NaOH. This is what the molarity is telling us. Okay, but now we still need to convert from moles of known to moles of unknown. So I'll go moles NaOH on the bottom into my moles of unknown. So moles HCl on the top. And now we'll use the balanced reaction coefficients to determine the numbers here. And I can see that in this re reaction, it happens to be, it won't always be the case, a one-to-one -one relationship between HCl and NaOH. So I'll put one here and a one here. All right, if I do that math on the calculator, I'll get 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HCl. And that step two is complete. Now, this question was not asking for the moles of HCl. It wanted the molarity of the HCl. So that's really easy. We just need to use the molarity formula for that. So step three, find molarity of unknown. So if you remember the formula for molarity, it was big M molarity equals N, which is number of moles over V, which is the volume. So we'll just plug that in. So big M of HCl is going to equal the number of moles of HCl divided by the volume of HCl in liters. Okay, now we know all those things, so we can just plug it in. So molarity of HCl is equal to the number of moles of HCl, which is what we just calculated, the 1.25 times 10 to minus 3 moles divided by the volume of HCl and it said that in the problem was 10 milliliters so we need to make sure that that is in liters so that would be 0 0.0100 liters that's 10 milliliters um, you could just solve that really quick so 10.0 milliliters what goes up must come down milliliters liters one milliliter is 10 to minus 3 liters so that would equal 0 0.0100 liters. Okay, now that we have our 
moles on the top and our liters on the bottom, we'll just go ahead and divide and we get 0 0.125 molar HCl. And that's it. That's all a titration is. A titration is essentially, it's almost similar math to the percent yield problems. If you remember how we did percent yield where we like had to worry about all sorts of stuff like finding the limiting reactant and stuff like that. <coughs> this is almost the same math as that because we'll take our starting amount of one of our reactants and then convert that into the moles of something else. Now in the percent yield problems, we converted that into moles of one of the products. But in a titration problem, you convert from moles of one reactant into the moles of the other reactant. And that's it. So actually titrations are easier than percent yield. You don't have to worry about limiting reactant uh, because you're at the equivalence point. And when you're at the equivalence point, that means you have exactly the same amount of moles of each reactant. So there is no limiting reactant. You have a perfectly equal amount of each. So they're both limiting reactants and they're neither limiting reactants. That's the magic of the equivalence point because we have the perfect amount of moles are equal to each other between the two reactants. But the math looks very similar to uh, the percent yield type problems. Except instead of converting from moles of starting material into moles of product, you go moles of one starting material into moles of the other. And then once you get those moles, you can do whatever you want with them. You can convert it into grams if I asked for grams. You can convert it into molarity if I asked for molarity. So on and so forth. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's all there is to know about titrations. And so that should help you out with the Beyond Labs Experiment 10 calculations. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye for now.